Happy New Year's ish to you all, hope you've been well. And today we start the year with a super popular Keychron K1, which was, I don't know, from like the first batch of protos, I think, so I've had this forever. And yeah, that kind of sums up 2021 for me. Admittedly, it wasn't great. I have a lot to catch up on, a lot of people to make amends to, so for everyone else that uses New Year's as an excuse for change, I'm in the same boat too, so let's have a big one, hey? There's been quite a few changes to the Q1 since this, so we won't do an outright review. And since this is mine, and they made an effort to include my blue logo, let's just, let's just have some fun with this. I was given the assembled version in Space Grey, however you can get the bare bones one which doesn't come with key switches or keycaps. The board that I have here, it was known for, let's say, three main things. First of all, the super solid starting price of 150 USD. It's extreme typing flex, and of course, the major metallic pin. Out of the box, it's not bad at all, the anodized finish is decent, bit of unevenness on the bottom with its vast surface area, nice 75% form factor, which was definitely the thing at the time, and they've since released a 65% version of this. It feels solid in the hands, has a good amount of heft to it with an all alloy design, no external weights. There's an OS switch on the rear for Windows and Mac, and the USB Type-C port next to that. And yeah, just a real solid, no frills gasket mount keyboard, with again, a whole lot of plate movement. Let's have a quick squiz at the new changes on the newer knob version of the Q1. Gatoron G Pro switches instead of Gatoron Phantom, which I think is purely a move to a clear switch housing. They list double gasket design, which is basically adding silicone in between the two metal pieces to reduce ping. A new microcontroller, thicker bottom case to again help with ping. Steel plate instead of aluminium. Not sure I agree with that. The board absolutely does, it doesn't need to be heavier. Um, I reckon it's just the costing. Sharper corners to fit more keycaps, nice. No more coiled aviator cable, fair enough because it wasn't great. But the board is 10 bucks more anyway. Alrighty, let's take it apart and have a closer look. Here's the top aluminium piece, and as said, this is a gasket mounted keyboard. There's a small daughter board for the USB C port and OS switch. On the badge version, you can take this off and do whatever, even put another switch in there. The newer knob version will, of course, have the knob, but it was nice of them to put my logo there, um, albeit off center. Here's the piece of beam plate. It uses Gatoron hot swap sockets, meaning that you can change out the switches without any soldering work. Therefore, it has a completely fixed layout and there is ISO available. My plate here is made from good old aluminium, but has since changed to steel. And all around, we have quite shallow tabs that have the very, very soft gaskets installed, which are quite tall, but narrow. Um, and you can also see that there is foam in between the plate and PCB. And finally, the bottom aluminium piece. Mine has this really thin piece of foam. However, they've since included more foam, which is optional for you to use. Originally, it was all about flex, so they gave it a lot of depth to allow for that to happen. And we can see that the gasket pieces sit on the raised sections here. So as you can imagine, there, there is indeed quite a lot of space in there. Okay, let's get to the garage and do some sketchy DIY stuff. Did you know that you can strip Anno with oven cleaner spray? It's pretty cool, I've only done it a few times, costs close to nothing, and is way easier than sanding. And look at it, it's actual magic. That being said, I'm not a professional, I, I don't know what I'm doing. If this is bad for Alu, let us know, but yeah, just don't follow me. But it's still magic.
My goodness, why it looks super crisp, hey? So good. And the kick apps I have, by the way, is Dummy Key Single Chip, which I borrowed from my very good friend at Mountain Keyboards here in Australia. Link below. Suss out his store, he's an absolute legend. And I chose this set mainly because of the blue logo badge. Um, and yeah, we're, we're making the keyboard around that. First idea I had was to try some hydro dipping with spray paint. I had some normal hardware store stuff and I just went for it. Of course I did some testing which honestly kinda looked promising, but look at this. I gave it a few goes, but it just wasn't going on well. It would be too gooey or solidify too quickly or break apart too easily, stuff like that. And it just wasn't working out, I was, I was so bad at it. Um, but there's a lot of variables involved too, temperature and humidity being the big ones with painting. So I did more research and apparently Montana paints were decent for this, so I went ahead and copped some of those. Really cool paints, a huge range and the spray was really nice. And it definitely was a lot easier. It, it wasn't really breaking apart as bad, but I was still getting um, some bubbles and it was a bit gooey and like overlap and stuff. For sure, like with another go or two, I would have got better, but I did let it dry and it just looked ugly. Way over the top, uh, really bold, which totally clashes with the keycaps as well. So in that case, I got to tone it down a bit and I kept having to prime the board when I messed up to start again. And the grey primer actually looks pretty good, so you know what, let's stick with primer. Obviously that's not going to be enough though, and I thought about what else I could do to spice it up without going too crazy, and that's where splatter paint comes in. I don't think I've done this before, at least properly, but there's always a first time for everything, so once again this is totally, totally not a tutorial. And for the final touches to my friends in counting, I know it was a while ago, but congratulations, I'm proud of all of you. Despite all the all the clownery and the likes of Kujo roaming around, we made it and here's to many more to come. And to fill the void here on the bottom, I promised my Canadian buddy Keyworm that I'd put him on. Check him out on Twitch, does a bunch of keyboard builds, absolute legend. Super keen for that 1k giveaway, mate. Ooh, nice. And lastly, something that expresses positivity and life. I have a good mate who lives by this and has recently excelled in this, so I hope this board is, is a stunner to you too. Alright, let's put it back together. We're going to mimic their new double gasket thing on ours since we don't have it. Super common mod. Um, I think I saw Wildcat the Goat do it a while ago amongst the others, so Let's do that, but I couldn't be bothered to go out and buy something, so I have these Poron foam pieces meant for stabs, which I got from Mechstock here in Australia.
And here it is, my own Libba Little slash Tay Keyboards Keychron K1. It's actually not bad, like I'm genuinely not disappointed in how it looks. It's not perfect or anything, but it's so much better than what I was able to dip. Um, I wouldn't mind trying it again though, just gotta do it better and hopefully get more favourable weather and all that, but I'm happy that it led to this anyway. I feel that there's a decent balance between the keycaps and the case. Again, this is Domiki single chip. So good to see another manufacturer put out some decent cherry profile key sets. Although from what I've seen, um, I don't know if things have changed, but they're quite a bit more saturated than the renders. So this set is actually really um, bold and vibrant. So yeah, that's why I think I needed the, the gray to bring it back down. The splatter wasn't too bad for a first attempt, I didn't even really practice to be honest, just YOLO'd it. Decent variation, probably would have liked a few more streaks, um, got one ugly blob on the bottom but overall not too bad, any imperfections we can just put down to character. Alright let's give it a quick listen, and this is using the included Gatoron Phantom Reds which are factory loot. Bad news first, there's still some ping, I didn't want to chuck more foam in, but it's definitely reduced it quite a lot. Tapping on the case doesn't do anything anymore, it's mainly the mods and the corners a bit, so yeah, definitely add some sort of tape in between the alloy pieces if you have the older version of the Q1. Beyond the ping, it's a surprisingly pleasant keyboard to type on, and on mine I chose to keep the flex, so no extra foam. So it's not particularly thocky or clacky, just nice and dampened. With more foam, that'll change and I'm sure there's a heap of videos and sound tests that you could check out. The steps are pretty good too, they come pre eludes but as usual when it comes to the spacebar, there is some tick. And that's the Keychron K1, very early edition. It's been a really popular board and strongly recommended by a lot of people. And I agree, it's a really good value keyboard, there's not much that can directly compete with it. The obvious one is the GMMK Pro. Feel and sound is a personal thing, but for most people the Keychron will provide a nicer experience. There's also the Echo Mod 007 which looks really nice, but um, I haven't been able to try that yet. And remember there have been various changes to the board, so make sure to suss that out if you're interested. If you're in Australia, check out Switch Keys for the Q1, and I'll have all the links in the description. Thanks again for watching guys, I'm always so grateful for the support over all this time. As said at the start, I really want to make this year a lot better, and I pray that it will be a lot better for you too. Bless.